Yeah, welcome back everyone after the coffee break. Um, so our next speaker for the day is Hiroki Matui from Chiba University in Japan. And his talk will be about various examples of topological full groups. Thank you. I'm Hiroki Matsui from Chiba University. And uh, is, is everything going well, right? Can I, can I start? You're great, and we can see your slides. Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me such an opportunity. And uh, yes, I'm in Japan, in Chiba, in Japan. And the Chiba is next to Tokyo. It's very close to Tokyo. And first, I'd like to tell you one important thing. The Tokyo Disneyland is actually in Chiba Prefecture. <laughs> yes. OK, so let's start the talk. Uh, this is my overview of the talk. And this is a survey talk about topological full groups. And I'm interested in dynamical systems on control set. Oh, can you see my mouse pointer? Yes, your mouse is visible. OK, yes, yeah. I'm interested in dynamical systems on control set. And uh, from dynamics, I construct etar groupoid. It's a group-like object. And its definition is given later. But it has many units. And the units form a space. It's, it's called unit space denoted by G0. And the G0 is homeomorphic to the original control set X. And from such a etar groupoid, first, I can consider its groupoid C star algebra, groupoid C star algebra. And uh, in fact, I'm from operator algebras. That's my main area. So I'm from analysis. And uh, once we have a C star algebra, it's important to compute its K groups. That's an important uh, invariant of C star algebras, K0 and K1. And another thing I want to look at is the topological full group associated with the group part and denoted by double bracket of G. It's a countable subgroup of homeo of X. And also, uh, I can define homology groups of the group of G, like HN. It's, it's an abelian family of abelian group, and it's also an important um, invariant of the groupoid was dynamics. Okay, so let us start with uh, the action of the integers, the, the case of Z action. Uh, yes, I think everybody is familiar with control set, so let me skip this. And let phi be an action on a control set X by homeomorphisms. It's action of the integers and assume that phi is minimal, and that is, every orbit is dense in X. So in this case, the topological full group is like this. And here, uh, the calligraphy G phi is the etal groupoid constructed, co constructed from the action phi. But here, let me postpone defining the groupoid, okay? I will introduce it later in a precise. But uh, let us let's understand that uh, in this case, the topological full group is given like this. It's a homeo homeomorphism gamma on X, such that it's, uh, it's locally gamma is written by a power of phi. And it's a, it, it forms a countable subgroup of homeo. 
And what is known for this group? So let phi and psi be two minimal z actions. Then Giordano, Patnam, and Skau show that two topological Hull groups are isomorphic if and only if phi is conjugate to psi or psi inverse. In such a case, I, we say that the phi is flip conjugate to psi. And secondly, they proved that there exists a surjective homomorphism i from the tfg to the integers. And they named it index map because it, in, in, in some situation it's related to the Fredholm index. And later, uh, I proved that the commutative subgroup, uh, okay, so this, this capital D is the derived subgroup, the commutative subgroup, uh, is simple. And also I determined it's uh, the abelianization of the topological Hull group. It's given like this. This, the, this Z is the, this Z the range of the index map. And also, the commutative subgroup is finitely generated if and only if phi is expansive. And then, mm, this is a deep theorem by Juschenko and Monod. It was proved that this group is amenable. So this gave a first example of, well, what? <laughs> the simple, finitely generated, amenable, infinite group, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, so this is a TFG of minimal Z action. And uh, let me give you uh, some simple example. So let lambda be an irrational number. And uh, by cutting the torus at the points n times lambda, we obtain Cantor set. And let phi be the translation by lambda or the rotation by lambda. It's a homeomorphism on the Cantor set x. And it, yes, it's a minimal. So, so uh, by the theorem which I mentioned in this previous slide, this is simple group, this is a simple group, and I can compute its abelianization like this. And uh, yes, for simplicity, let us assume that the uh, irrational number is like this. And uh, I define two elements, sigma and tai, tau in the topological full group as follows. So sigma is the transposition between this um, blue interval and green interval. And tau is in the same way, the transposition between this and that. Then I can prove that uh, this topological full group is generated by phi, sigma, and tau. And these two, these three elements correspond to the generators of the abelianization. And of course, by the theorem of disjunct and mono, this is amenable. All right. Then next. Uh, it's a natural problem to extend uh, the results which I explained uh, in the case of Z action to the case of actions of Zn. Okay, so let phi be a free minimal action and consider uh, the corresponding groupoid. In this case, yes, I can also show that the index map I is again surjective. And the index, the range of the index map is the homology group of G5, H1. 
And in the case of Z actions, this H1 is always the integers. So be before the, the index map, it takes its values in the integers, but now in the case of Zn, Z becomes H1. And uh, as for abelianization, there exists an exact sequence like this. So this arrow is the index map. And uh, I may have some torsion but, uh, which, come, which come from H0. And uh, again, the commutator is simple. OK. And as for amenability, Eric Monod proved that topological full group is sometimes non-amenable. And it's easy to find uh, example such that uh, this is amenable. But uh, it's sometimes not. And it seems that uh, it's quite difficult problem to determine when it is amenable or not. It, it's, it's, it contains an open end. And uh, later, Negrashevich proved that the commutator subgroup is finitely generated if and only if phi is expansive. It's exactly the same way as uh, action of the integers. Okay. <clears throat> so next, well, in this slide, I'd like to explain orbit equivalence, but uh, this is a digression in this talk. So it's, it's not directly related to topological full groups, but uh, let me mention this briefly. Suppose we are given two um, topological actions on Cantor sets, phi and psi, actions of gamma and lambda, and they are said to be orbit equivalent or topologically orbit equivalent if we can find a homeomorphism H such that H preserves every orbit. Phi orbit is sent to psi orbit. And it's a natural problem to classify minimal dynamical systems on Cantor set up to orbit equivalence. But it's a far less developed subject and uh, the only thing uh, uh, which are known so far is, uh, yes, I can, we can give a classification for actions of finite, finitely generated free abelian group. So namely, let phi and psi be like this. Then the uh, orbit equivalent if and only if uh, there exists a homeomorphism like this. And uh, originally, this theorem was obtained by Giordano, Patunam, and Skull in the case of the integers, the Z. z. And uh, later, that result was extended to um, Zn. And uh, this orbit equivalence, notion of orbit equivalence is quite weaker than the isomorphism between groupoids. Namely, two groupoids are isomorphic if and only if phi and psi are orbit equivalent with continuous co-cycles. Okay. But in this theorem, I do not require that the co-cycles are continuous. So we are, we are, in this talk, I, I, we are interested in groupoid. OK, so this was a digression. Then let us give a precise definition. 
the notion of et al groupoid. A groupoid G is a group-like algebraic object in which the product may not be defined for all pairs. So every element G in G is sort of as an arrow from this dot to that dot. And R, it's a range map, sends G to G, G inverse. So this black dot is the range. And S means source. So this black dot is the source. And uh, the range of R and S is the space of unit, the unit space. And I give a topology, a nice topology compatible with the uh, algebraic structure of groupoid. Uh, G is an etal groupoid if G is equipped with a locally compact Hausdorff topology compatible with the groupoid structure. And uh, this requirement is important. I mean the range or equivalently, or equivalently the source map is a local homeomorphism. So the etalness uh, comes from this condition the range map is a local homeomorphism. So an arrow G is sort of as a germ at SG. So this dot is a point in the unit space. So this dot is a point in the Cantor set. But this point has a neighborhood. And of, of course, this point also has a neighborhood and G is um, some local homeomorphism from this neighborhood to that neighborhood. It's a jam. And uh, we say that G is minimal if every orbit is dense in the unit space. Yes, and uh, yeah, of course, in what follows, we assume that the unit space is a Cantor set. All right. So the most typical example of etal groupoid is a transformation groupoid. It comes from group actions. So let phi is a, the action of a discrete group gamma on the Cantor set and uh, define calligraphy G sub phi B gamma times X with the product topology. And it becomes an etal groupoid with this groupoid operation. And we call it the transformation groupoid arising from this group action phi. So the pair gamma X in our G phi is sort of as this arrow, okay? And the unit space G phi zero is one times X, which is naturally identified with X. So we have already seen these transformation groupoids in the case of the actions of the integers and also ZM, okay? <clears throat> so next, let us define the topological full group of etal groupoid. So let G be an etal groupoid. And a compact open subset U is called a bisection if both R restricted to U and S restricted to U are injective. And the topological full group double bracket of G is defined as follows. So it's a group uh, consisting of gamma 
uh, such that they exist by section u, and gamma is written like this. So this bisection u uh, must be uh, a, uh, must have the whole space as its um, domain and also as its range, okay? Because gamma ma, gamma have to be a, gamma has to be a homeomorphism. It, it has to be a defined. It, it must be defined for all points in G zero. Okay, this is the definition of a topological crew group. So equivalently, we say that uh, a homeomorphism gamma belongs to the topological crew group if and only if gamma equals some element G in the etal groupoid. Uh, yeah, gamma equals G as a jam at X. For every x, so gamma is locally written as uh, elements of G. Okay. So um, the transformation groupoid is a typical and then the important example of the groupoid, and in this case. Uh, Yes, gamma belongs to the topological full group if and only if there exists a continuous map C from X to gamma such that, so gamma is locally written by uh, phi, okay? So this is the definition of TFG. Okay, so I, I have to define or introduce many things. So next, uh, yeah, I introduced groupoid C star algebra. For an etal groupoid G, the space of compactly supported continuous functions becomes a star algebra by these operations. So this is an analogy of its usual group algebra. It's an analogy of the group algebra in the setting of a group. And uh, by, taking, by, by taking a suitable completion, I get a groupoid C star algebra as a completion of this star algebra. And uh, it's denoted by C star G. And uh, yes, so it's an important subject in the study of operator, operator algebras. And this sister algebra contains a abelian subalgebra, subalgebra, C of G0. It means that the continuous functions on the unit space. It's an abelian subalgebra. And it's also easy to, it's easy to see that this abelian subalgebra is maximal abelian. And its unitary normalizers generate the whole C star algebra. And such an Abelian subalgebra is called a Carlton subalgebra. Okay, then we can prove such a theorem. So suppose we have two minimal groupoids, G1 and G2. And these four conditions are equivalent. First, G1 is isomorphic to G2 as an etal groupoid. And secondary, the topological full group is isomorphic to topological full group as a discrete group. And uh, the same for the commutative subgroup. And lastly, uh, there exists an isomorphism between C star algebras, so it's an isomorphism of C star algebras, which preserves the Cartan subalgebra. Okay, so one is equivalent to two or three, 
This means that the topological whole group or its commutator remembers the original et al group or G or dynamical system on the Cantor set. <laughs> Okay. So then let me explain the homology group of the groupoid of a groupoid. So let G, calligraphy G, be an etal groupoid. And H and G are the homology groups of this chain complex. And here Gn is the space of composable strings of n elements in G. And uh, yes, I can define these derivations and uh, I can form this chain complex and taking its homology groups. And uh, let's look at this delta one. Delta one is given like this. So F is a function of G1, but G1 is of course uh, equal to exactly the same as G. So F is a function of G, an uh, integer valued function. And the delta one of F is a function of the unit space uh, given by this. So in particular, uh, H0 is, uh, the co kernel of this delta one. So H0 is isomorphic to this ABN group. Okay. Yes, H0 is a quotient of this group. And if u is a bisection such that s of u is equal to r of u equals g0, then uh, from such a u, uh, we, can inter we can define an uh, element of the topological Hull group or equivalently any, topolog any element of the topological Hull group corresponds to such a bisection u then uh, obviously the indicator function of u belongs to the kernel of delta one, okay? Because this is one and one and so one minus one is zero. So hence one can define the index map from the topological Hull group to H1. So H1 is the kernel of delta one modulo the image of delta two. So by this observation, I can define the index map. Okay. Yes, and uh, when the etal groupoid is the groupoid coming from the group actions, then these homology groups are canonically isomorphic to the classical group homology with coefficients uh, C of X Z. So this homology is a generalization of the group homology. So this is an uh, explanation about homology group. So then uh, let's look at the simplicity of commutator subgroup. Uh, this theorem is known. So let G be a minimal etal groupoid, which is either almost finite or purely infinite. Then the commutator is simple. And moreover, the index map I is onto. And here, uh, I do not like to um, explain the definition of almost finiteness in a precise way, but uh, let me say, uh, when gamma is finitely generated and has polynomial growth, 
then it is known that the transformation groupoid is almost finite. And uh, if, uh, in general, if G is almost finite, then there exists an invariant probability measure. So, yes, almost finiteness, uh, loosely speaking, almost finiteness com corresponds to a um, dynamical system uh, which has invariant measures. And conversely, uh, G is said to be purely infinite if every Kroppen subset A has a paradoxical decomposition by which I mean there exist, there exist bisections, U and V. Uh, their domain are the same as A, but uh, their range are disjoint and their union is contained in A. So it, this means that A has a paradoxical decomposition. So, in particular, if G is purely infinite, then G does not have uh, any invariant probability measure. Okay. So, uh, this is a theorem. So, if G is almost finite or purely infinite, the groupoid has such nice properties. So uh, before I explain the tra tra transfer transformation groupoid of the integers or the Zn, and they are examples of this almost finite groupoids. So, so let's go to some examples of purely infinite groupoids. So, I, I'd like to explain why one-sided shifts of finite type. So let V, E be an irreducible finite directed graph. And let A be the, its adjacency matrix. And set X be the, yes, one-sided shift space associated with this directed graph. Then the one-sided shift, shift sigma on X is called the shift of finite type, SFT. Or sometimes it's called the topological Markov chain. Yeah, it's a, one of the most important dynamical systems on Cantor set. And uh, when, yes, V is a set of vertex and E is a set of edges, and if I, if I have a single vertex and the K edges, uh, this is called the full shift over K symbols. Okay, full shift over K symbols. And uh, from those SFT, we can make SFT group of GA. And here, A, the capital A is the essence matrix. Uh, like this. So GA is XK minus LY and uh, satisfying these con this condition. So roughly speaking, GA is uh, corresponding to an equivalence relation on next. Uh, and the equivalence is like this. Okay, equivalence relation induced by the shift map sigma. And the product is given like this. And with a suitable topology, this becomes an etal groupoid. And uh, its homology groups are computed like this. H0 is here and H1 is here and uh, the higher Hn uh, vanishes.
So here, uh, let us um, recall Higman Thompson groups. Uh, yes, this, this appeared in the previous talk. So uh, Thompson gave the first example of a finitely generate, uh, no, no, finitely presented the infinite simple group. And Higman and Brown later generalized it to infinite families Fn, Tn, Vn. And here I'm interested in VN, Higman Thompson group. It's a, it consists of piecewise linear right continuous by set by bijections uh, from this interval to this interval with finitely many singularities uh, satisfying these conditions. This VN is called the Higman Thompson group. And it is known that Vn is finitely presented and the commutator is simple. And the uh, abelianization is trivial when n is even and is equal to z2 when n is odd. It's a classical result. Ah, uh, yes, and uh, it's uh, of course uh, important open big question that uh, Fn it is not yet known if Fn, the Thompson group, is amenable or not. Uh, yes, of course, Vn contains a free group, so it's not, it's not amenable. Then uh, Nekrasevich observed this. When x sigma is a full shift over n symbols, then its topological full group, double bracket Gn, is naturally isomorphic to the Higman Thompson group Vn. Okay, the topological full group associated with the full shift over n symbols is isomorphic to the Higman Thompson. And uh, yes, it's not so hard to see the this isomorphism. So let B the uh, single vertex set and uh, E be a edge set like this. The con and uh, I define a continuous map rho from this one-sided space, space, one-sided space to this interval like this. So it's a continuous map, not, not a homeomorphism, but it's almost a homeomorphism. And uh, yes, actually, this induces isomorphism between the topological full group here uh, and the Higman Thompson group here. Uh, yes, uh, so, yeah, okay, so, yes, so, and so, uh, GA for general SFT groupoids GA may be thought of as a generalization of the Higman Thompson group Vn. So in, in this setting, so let A be the adjacency matrix of an irreducible finite directed graph. Then first I proved that, uh, let's consider this triple. Then it's a complete invariant for the isomorphism class of GA within SFT groupoids. So we gave a complete classification of um, the SFT groupoids. And also uh, it's, it's proved that the commutator is simple. Ah, uh, yes. So th this is a direct consequence that uh, this groupoid is purely infinite. It's, it's not so hard to see. So it, it, this group is simple. And also I can determine its abelianization like this. So this H1 part comes from the index map I, but the index map I has some kernel, which is related to H0. And uh, this topological full group is of type F infinity in the same way as the Higman-Thompson group. 
So in particular, it's of type F2 that is finitely presented. And also this group has a paragraph property. So as I, as I mentioned before, this group is, is purely infinite. So this, this contains a free group. So it's never uh, amenable, but uh, it's, it's weakly amenable in, in a certain sense. So let me give you uh, one example. So let's consider the boundary action of the free group. Let F2 be the usual free group generated by AB and let S be this generating subset. Then the hyperbolic boundary of F2 is uh, described like this, described uh, uh, by the space of one-sided sequence, right? And uh, F2, uh, is acting on this boundary, the boundary action. So uh, uh, we can we can consider its transformation groupoid G phi. But this G phi is canonically isomorphic to the SFT groupoid G A. A is uh, an adjacency matrix, and uh, in this case A is given like this. It's a four by four matrix. And that the number four uh, is correspond, corresponds to this generating set. And this zero in four places corresponds to this, um, what do you say? Forbidden words, okay? So the transformation groupoid um, of this boundary action is can Isomor uh, is is identified with uh, SFT group or GA. So yeah, in particular, it's H zero and H one are the two, and higher H n vanish. Okay. Yes. Then, well, okay. So, please let me skip these slides. Yeah, there are several examples of groupoids and also the uh, topological whole groups, but uh, please let me skip these slides. <coughs> yes, the, I'd like to explain uh, recent result by Nekrashevich. So let tau be uh, involution first. First, let tau be uh, involution. And uh, I'd like to, in, I, I have to introduce uh, some notion, not, some notation. A finite subgroup A is called a fragmentation of tau if the following fault. So um, A is a finite subgroup satisfying for any X in X and for any H in A, one has H is equal to X or H is equal to tau of X. So H is a restriction of the involution tau to a subset. okay? And secondary, <clears throat> for any X, uh, we can find at least one element H such that H is equal to tau. In this case, we say that this subgroup A, uh, sub A this finite subgroup A is a fragmentation. And uh, as a concrete example, let's consider the irrational rotation by this lambda. And uh, by cutting the torus at the points n lambda, we get the cantor set x. And on this cantor set x, define two involutions tau and sigma by this. Tau is given by lambda minus x. 
and sigma is 1 minus x. They are involutions. And then the uh, composition tau sigma is the translation by lambda, rotation by lambda. So, so this lambda induces a minimal z action on x. Okay, so based on these two involutions, Nekrasevich proved the following theorem. So there exist fragmentations A and B of tau and sigma respectively, such that the group generated by A and B satisfies the following. First, this F is a topological full group of a certain groupoid, certain ethyl groupoid G. So this F is a topological full group. And F is periodic and has sub-exponential groups. So any element has finite order and the group has sub-exponential groups. So it's like a Grigorchuk group. And the commutator is simple. And also the, its abelianization is determined. So it's, it's a very, mm, yeah, interesting, interesting example of topological who groups. So the, the involution sigma, which was, uh, which was uh, given by one minus X. So it has one fixed point X zero corresponding to one half of the interval. And the fragmentation B above has the following, following property. For every H in B, the closure of the interior of the fixed point of H contains X zero, okay? It contains uh, X zero in its interior. And uh, so this condition is um, bit a problem. And because of this, this ethyl group or G becomes non Hausdorff. So, so far, I, I, I was thinking that about Hausdorff groupoid only. But in this setting, uh, in order to get such an interesting uh, topological full group, we have to work with non Hausdorff groupoids. And uh, the, so far, the theory about et al. groupoid or homologies or topological full groups are considered in only in the setting of Hausdorff groupoid. So I think this is a very important open end to extend everything to non-Hausdorff case, non-Hausdorff non case um, containing this interesting example. Okay. <clears throat> Then, uh, yes, this is my last slide. Uh, finally, let me explain uh, some conjecture about homologies and K groups. So in many cases, uh, we have this isomorphisms. In many concrete examples, um, yeah, when I computed homologies and K groups, then they coincide in this way. So I made a conjecture. This always hold true. That was the HK conjecture. So it's, 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 some, it's a bit similar to the classical Chan character. <laughs> but uh, Scarparo, uh, recently found a counterexample. 
And uh, yeah, it, it, this country example is not so um, too difficult. It's, it's a quite uh, simple example. So it, it's not true. This conjecture is not true. But uh, so I, I, I changed a little bit. So it, it now becomes a HK problem. So to what extent <laughs> this isomorphism uh, make a sense. So recently, uh, <clears throat> there exists a great progress made by Proietti and Yamashita. So let G be an eta groupoid with torsion free stabilizers, satisfying the strong bound cone conjecture in the groupoid sense. Then they proved that there exists a convergent spectral sequence from uh, the groupoid homology to the K theory, K groups of the groupoid C algebra. So, so this does not imply this isomorphism, this isomorphism, because it, it's a, it's a just a spectral sequence. So, but uh, Yes, it, it, at least it suggests that uh, H and K are closely related. And uh, this, in this counter example, uh, the condition of torsion free stabilizers, uh, uh, yeah, we, we don't, it, it are not satisfied. So, so, it fails. Okay. So yes, let me let me stop my talk here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hiroki. Um, are there any questions? Yes, I have. I have a question. Yes. Um, so I'm no expert in homology of groupoids or K theory of C star algebras. So could you give a, a non-expert explanation of why you think, what, what, what does homology have to do with K theory? Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm also a non-expert. <laughs> So, yeah, so first I, I computed um, homology groups in some cases, then they coincide. Yes. And, uh, well, so in the case of the actions of Zn, it's, um, how can I say? Okay, in the case of ZN actions, homology groups are, can be identified with some check cohomology of some, um, what do you say? Some space, uh, mapping, mapping torus. Does it make a sense? Then, then again, then this can be um, it, its homology or cohomology can be identified with some k groups of the across the product C star algebra. Mm -hmm. So, in, in that at least in that case, yeah, it, it may be natural to expect um, or isomorphism or some almost isomorphism. Yeah. Okay, and what about for um, AF, maybe, in, maybe this is easier, in the case of AF algebras? Yeah, 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 yes, um, yes. So is that, is that known? I mean, I don't, I don't know, I'm no expert in the field, as I say. Yeah, it's known, know it's known. Thing. That's known and that's, and it's, this isomorphism holds? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. If G is AF, H0, mm -hmm is the K0 and the right. other HN vanishes. 
Aha, uh -huh. okay. Okay, so I guess the question is what, what are the higher, the higher item, right? Okay. Okay, any other questions for Hiroki? Well, it does not can seem I, that there. Can, ask, can I ask a question? question? Yeah, sure. Uh, um, yeah. You said at some point that if the topological full groups of an atal groupoid are isomorphic, then the groupoids themselves are isomorphic. Yes. So, um, is there anything more general than that? So, suppose I don't have an isomorphism, I've just got some morphism. So, suppose, for example, if I have uh, a functor between two atal groupoids, that's the identity on the unit space, then I will induce something on the topological full groups. On the other hand, I can say if I've got a homomorphism between the topological full groups, did that come from a functor on the atal groupoids? Um, do, you know, do you know anything about that? Or is it something special about isomorphisms? Yes, so, yes, so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, this theorem says more that uh, any, uh, let me think, let me think, any isomorphism between the topological full group comes from uh, the isomorphism from etal group. Yes. Um, okay, yes, right, it's induced right. by yeah. an isomorphism in, in of the case of group. isomorphisms. Yeah, okay, but yeah. not for homomorphisms. Right, right, and uh, that's a very good question, and uh, yes, it, it, it's an important problem to look at homomorphisms between two topological full groups. And uh, there is some result by, uh, I forgot the name, are you thinking of Matebon? Ah, yes, 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 yes. Nicola Matebon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, he made a very good work about that topic. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. Any further questions for Hiroki? Um, yeah, I have one question. Um, so if I, if I have a directed graph, so the finite directed graph. Yes. Um, then I have the groupoid as you described. Yes. Uh, can we know what would be the full group of this groupoid? Can one calculate that? Full group? Mm? Yeah, full group. Topological full group. Yeah. Mm. Mm? <laughs> I mean, so you 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 mean that? Uh, the topological full group is uh, acting on this space, one-sided sequence space. So, I mean, you have a graph, then you have this groupoid associated to this graph. Yes, yes. And therefore, you have a full uh, topological full group. Yes. Associated to this groupoid now. Yeah. So if I hand you a graph, would you be able to tell me what that group is? Is it possible to describe it? Mm. So, so, yeah, in, in the case of um, full shift case, it's the same as the Higman Thompson. So you can understand it as uh, some three automorphism. So the full shift, is it the, the one that associated to Kuhn's algebra? So o right, 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 right. So, but in general, I have several vertices. Bautis, so, so it's, it's something like uh, taking covering of the graph. So then the, the, it's, it's, not a, it's, it's not a tree anymore, but uh, it's not a regular tree. Yeah, but uh, yes, in some sense, you can view that elements of topological full group 
mm -hmm. uh, acting on some trees. I mean, one, one general question I had is that um, if I have a graph, then yeah. you have a graph sister algebra. Yeah. Is it possible to say when this graph sister algebra happens to be ON or isomorphic to ON? I mean, you have one of these criteria that you look at the co I mean, look at the co kernel and determinant, you have that. Uh, exactly. Yeah, you have yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't, I mean, this triple, I think it's like a K theory. So one of them is K zero, one of them is D. But I, I, I want sort of a algebraic property, not- ah, I see. Not this. I see, so, so yes, yes. You, you, are, you, are, saying, you are saying that uh, you, you want to know two, two systems are isomorphic or not by looking at the graphs. Right, or, or some groups associated to some, yeah, some algebraic group associated to, to do that, graph, mm. not this sort of uh, K theory invariance that you have. Mm. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, su such a study is also known. And uh, well, by, by changing graphs by some uh, rules, mm. we can define some equivalence relations between graphs. Are oh, these out splitting and in splitting stuff like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Such a study is also known. Mm. All right. Yeah. But wh wh why don't you compute this? It's, it's, it's easy. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, mean, like, I, right. so, I mean, to be honest, I was thinking in terms of algebraic version that you have, okay, you have O2 and you have this Kuhn splice of O2. Ah, yes. And Okay, they give you the same invariant, your invariance. They are the same, therefore, their groupoids are the same. But then, if you just think in terms of just algebraic version, uh -huh. it becomes the Levy path algebra. This is not known if they are isomorphic. So, L2 and the Kuhn splice of L2, it's not known. Although these, these invariants, they are all the same. So that's why I yeah, wanted the, the, to. See this determin determinant. To uh, it distinguishes them. So, well, I mean, yeah, but in that, yeah, yeah, I understand what you mean, but in the algebraic version, it's uh -huh. not known if the L2, so the Levite algebra, and the L2 minus, which is the Kuhn splice of that, yes. are yes. isomorphic or not. So in the C star version, you know that, but in the yeah. algebraic version, you don't know it. Uh-huh, I see, I see. That's why I was thinking maybe I need to look at the full groups or something, mm -hmm. not the not this sort of K theory um, data. But yeah, so. All right. Um, do we have any further questions for Hiroki? Well, if not, let's thank Hiroki one more time. For his nice talk. And thanks everyone for coming.